So now we're going to talk about how to build an analog circuit that can operate a memory and then operating that memory with the EDU. For this demonstration of a pulse counter, I've built a circuit with four parts. There's the memory board, right here is the capacitor. Here's a controller board, which allows uh, me to control the memory. It is in turn controlled by the EDU through this six pin telephone ribbon cable. So one, two, three parts. And finally, the fourth part is the EDU software, which operates the EDU, allows you to apply voltages and measure signals coming from it. The memory board looks like this. Here's the board, a socket, and a electric capacitor made by Radiant in a TO18 transistor package. It's four pin. There's two capacitors in here. Cap B, if you look at the data sheet, is one being used. Here is a right angle header for this, or uh, pins, to allow me to stick it into sockets. This can have a much lower profile by taking out the uh, socket, soldering the capacitor in, and not using the right angle header but uh, there are the capacitors permanently in the board. Here you can remove the capacitor and put in uh, a replacement or even a different capacitor with a different composition if you want to experiment with materials. Here is my memory circuit, again as we've been looking at with our diode. However, I've added another component here, a TVS. Now these devices provide protection to the memory circuit. The reason is because usually to do this down or do a count, I can attach some piezoelectric devices here. Now we're not going to do that in this case, but uh, in some certain applications you can apply a piezoelectric device here. And a piezoelectric harvester sometimes can generate tens of voltages, 70 volts. It can also generate minus 70 volts. So this diode protects against minus voltages this TVS clips this voltage to 15 volts if the piezoelectric device tries to put too much voltage in and protects the rest of the components. We are not using this in this case. We're going to use this input to set it down with a known voltage. However, these are built into the board, so they're there. They're not going to be shown most of the time in the rest of this presentation, but they are there. And you have to account for this voltage drop and this voltage drop when figuring out the voltage to use across your electric capacitor. So we will set the capacitor down here, input counts here, and also read counts here, monitor this output. This red here shows what's on the board. R1 is normally on the board at this point. You can see it's been removed. And it's been put on the board itself, on the control board, so that you can switch it out with other resistors to change your time constant. So here's a circuit for the controller board. Here's a memory board in R1. The EDU down the telephone cable. There are op amps powered from the EDU on the board which allow an oscilloscope to be attached to the circuit so you can monitor what's going on at this node and at the output node without disturbing the circuit. These are totally passive. On the other side I've taken uh, voltage from the EDU, uh, scaled it down to 5 volts with a push button. Pushing the button puts 5 volts in this node, turns on the transistor, polarizes the capacitor down. Again, note that R1 is not on the memory board, but is on the control board. Simply by changing R1, you can change the circuit speed. Now, in this system, in this demonstration, R1 is 2,200 ohms with the 10,000 square micron PZT capacitor. The rise time takes about uh, a millisecond and a half to saturate. You can make it faster by dropping this to a kilo ohm or slower by raising it to 5 kilo ohms or 10 kilo ohms. So here's the control board. Here's the BNCs for the oscilloscope, the op amps that control the BNCs. Here's the RJ11 telephone jack with a telephone cable that goes to the EDU. This is a six line 
telephone cable with the outer two lines being plus or minus 15 volts, the inner lines being the signals. Ground, the voltage arbitrary waveform generator that comes in is an oscilloscope that goes out. And a polarization measurement channel, which we don't use. After all, the EDU is a hysteresis measurement system. It's just not used for this purpose. Here's the memory board. It sits into this socket. The socket is marked for the EDU, and the EDU controls this part of it. Here's the resistors for uh, downscaling the 15 volts to 5 volts for the down button. The EDU socket talks to the EDU. The board must be put in here to control it from the EDU. There's a separate socket that's identical with its that goes only to this two terminal connector. There's no power in this circuit right here. It's for practicing with an external device. R1 is set separately from the board. And that's what these values are. You can see it's 2.2K for this example. Here's the uh, divide by uh, 3 to get 5 volts from 15. Here's the push button. And here's the terminal connector for this board. To line the board, notice that this connector right here, this solder pad, is square. That's pin 1. Pin 1 is always marked. So here's pin 1 on the back, pin 1 on the socket, pin 1 on this socket. So pin 1 should be aligned, the capacitor, away from the op amps. Pins 1, 2, 3, 4. So always align the black marks. The push button is right here. Pressing it momentarily will force the ferroelectric capacitor on the memory board down, but only in the EDU socket. Nothing is connected to the socket except for this two strip, uh, two terminal strip. The count circuit on this side, here's the count board. You see the count label connected to the, to the uh, terminal strip, R1 and the memory board, has the following circuit. Down is not connected, output is not connected, the pulse generator, whether it's a sensor or a pulse generator or a uh, energy harvester, has the negative voltage attached to ground, the positive voltage attached to the EV connection, here's ground and EV, and every pulse coming from there goes through R1. So the memory is very easy to operate. We set the capacitor down, move it to where it's going to be used to count. Every pulse moves the capacitor upwards a small amount. When we're done counting, we take this out, put it into the control socket over here, use the EDU to see how many pulses are remaining. That way we know what the count was from the pulse generator. So, pulse Analog operation has three steps. Step one, put the memory board into the EDU socket, determine the maximum count so we know how many it counts, then preset the capacitor down. Move the memory board to where it's going to count. It can count in the count socket, it can be moved to your own circuit, or you can leave it in EDU for practice, using the EDU to do the counts. When you're done, insert the memory count, the memory board back into the EDU socket and count the remaining pulses. So step one, let's go through it in detail. Select the desired pulse width for the EDU to execute on its arbitrary waveform generator. I'll demonstrate that later. Clear the EDU plot. Insert the memory board into the EDU control socket. Preset it down using the down button. Then put in multiple pulses to count how many are required to pass the threshold voltage. Then preset the capacitor down again with a down button. It's now ready to go where you want to count. In this case, you can put in the count socket, write some number of pulses from zero to maximum in it with your sensor, your vent detector, your pulse generator. Or you can leave it in the memory board, in the EDU socket for practice, and write some number of pulses with the EDU. Finally, you can read the memory by inserting it back into the EDU socket, count how many pulses are left in the memory, then calculate your stored value. It's the maximum minus the remaining count. I showed this plot before showing how the pulses form a shelf. However, I did that by offsetting when each pulse starts to create this effect. 
In reality, you'll use only this one pulse with no delay. And so these pulses will be collapsed on top of each other. This is what is shown on the right hand side. These are these pulses collapsed to align with each other. Here's pulse one, pulse two, three, four, five, six. This is pulse six. And these are the remaining pulses up here which have very little differentiation. So this guy reading the this plot can do one, two, three, four, five, six pulses if I use 2.5 volts or 2.6 volts.